Yeah. Uh, so while Daniel's looking, Tony, tell us a little mm-hmm. bit more about your channel. To fill oh, in the okay. time. Well, we review retro games as most people do, but the uh, the twist is we take a look at a lot of beta stuff. People send us things to take a look at that haven't necessarily been released. And sometimes people send us stuff to verify whether or not it's really truly a beta or, or whether it's just a fake. So, for example, Zelda related, we were sent, uh, well, actually, we were sent, I traded for a, in this particular case, oftentimes we're sent stuff, um, a prototype beta version of Wind Waker on an NR disc, which are, I have some behind me, but basically they're writable uh, GameCube dev discs. And it had differences in the title screen. And it was online as being a beta and all this, but turns out it was fake. So we did some gaming sleuthing and figured it out and was able to prove something to make sure that future people don't get uh, duped, basically. So we do a lot of that kind of gaming archaeology, gaming detective work on my channel in addition to the uh, reviewing and streaming and being silly. Nice. And then it's hard for games on yeah, YouTube, probably should have Twitter, mentioned everything. What it's called, yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah. It's hard for games. Uh, you can search on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Our, our channels on YouTube primarily. All right, uh, we have a quick question from Miss Click, who says, "She asked why Jesse's so ugly." <laughs> no, she asked about the loft wings. <laughs> oh, that too. She asked two questions. <laughs> well, she did. She really say that? That's horrible. She really said that. So, so mean. Rude. So <laughs> mean. I think she removed it, but because uh, <laughs> I called her out on being rude. Uh, so the the loft wing yes, thing loft is uh, a quick question while Daniel still searches for his because this is like a one word answer. She asked if uh, you had a loft wing from Skyward Sword. What color would your loft wing be? I would go with blue. Just because I like blue. If you can't tell from the chair and the wall, so the, chair, the wall that matches your chair. Yeah. Would have never guessed. Yeah. So Ilya, color. I know color. it doesn't exist, but I want specifically antique rose. Antique rose. It is my absolute favorite color, dusty antique rose. All right. And, and you, Tony? Definitely a, a purple, like a, a deep purple. purple. Yeah, I got to uh, honor the late great Prince and the uh, greatest album of all time, Purple Rain. So, uh, definitely a deep, I'd say, Wonder Swan crystal colored purple. For those of you that know what a Wonder Swan crystal is. All right, and Daniel? I'm say teal, because teal, I, just, yes. I like the teal colors, like blues and greens. Those are yeah. my jam. So, I mean, when I used to play. <clears throat> Starcraft back in the day. <laughs> I always feel characters, so <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good choice. It's, I like the I just like the color, guys. Jeez. All right. Were you able Stop to find asking me, Jesse? So rude. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to find your question, Daniel? Yeah. So um, two things here. First okay. of all, it's, it's been sitting in our mailbag uh, a bit here, and it's not actually a question. Uh, but I don't know if we actually ever read it out on the podcast previously. But Chrissy G put uh, just a shout out. Love you guys all together. I miss King Ferguson. Come back soon. So there was a podcast that I missed and I wasn't there. Thanks, Chrissy, for <laughs> missing me. <laughs> um, the uh, actual question I think, I can't remember. I think we might have at least discussed something similar to this. But the question goes by Spyro Chick 101. Uh, we don't see the Gerudo and Twilight Princess, but we know they are allies and very close to the royal family in the time of Breath of the Wild. Did we answer this question, Jesse? Sound familiar? Mm. Well, I'm just going to keep going. When no. did this alliance occur? With Ganondorf gone, maybe the Gerudo were quote unquote free because they weren't ruled by force or fear of Ganon. This is a so, deep lore question. This is, this is a, some lore heavy stuff here. So in Ocarina of Time, the Gerudo are not really that. The, politically speaking, the tension is there's is there between the Gerudo and the Hylians. Breath of the Wild, they're allies to the point where even Zelda's mother and Urbosa, who was the chief of the Gerudos, were close personal friends. Um, so 
I mean, we've got 10,000 years <laughs> of time plus to work with like, between these two points of time here. So, okay, so... What do you guys think this, this political tension was eased? Alright, so I'm going to say because mm -hmm. in Ocarina of Time, Link and Zelda look through the window and you can see Ganondorf kneeling before the king. We never see the king, but we see him, like, you know, mm -hmm. kneeling before him or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the Gerudo go to Hyrule to get their mates every so often. Mm -hmm. And the Gerudo hired the carpenters to fix the bridge when you're an adult. So I'm mm -hmm. going to say the Gerudo always had a friendship not always but because they were banished to the desert at one point but i'm going to say they had a fairly good working relationship with the hylians during ocarina of time it's just their leader was the one that was corrupted so it kind of influenced down to the normal civilian gerudos and once ganondorf was banished uh, they were able to work out their differences. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to say, is that the Gerudo weren't necessarily bad, they were just controlled by a bad leader. And even uh, the twin Rova sisters were yeah. bad as well. So uh, Because Nobu, who was like second in charge, was a good person, tried to help yep. out so the rest of them could have just been kind of like her so that's what i'm going to say uh but that is like a very like theory Some... deep lore stuff so yes it's very interesting this is the star wars episode one of zelda <laughs> we're getting into the, All right. the politics here so Ilya, do you have anything to say about this are you familiar with the story yeah, yeah. I was thinking, and this is obviously, like you said, Daniel, like, there's 10,000 years since, you know, the last game or anything, so it's like, well, there's plenty of time for this to have happened, so you could make up anything, but I was just thinking, um, and I hope I'm phrasing this right, and I might have some, I might be mm -hmm. spewing out incorrect information, so you have to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Zelda says that in Breath of the Wild, she says that she has this gift and her mother had this gift who should have taught her and her grandmother taught it to her mother. Mm -hmm. My understanding, which makes me think that the royal bloodline runs through these women. That's not the king. The king was the one that married in. Um, which makes yeah. sense because the goddess Hylia was reborn as exactly. Zelda initially. Okay. So that means there's been at least, we know, three generations of females <laughs> born to the royal family and... You know, so the blood rhyme not going through the males just yet unless... Yeah, so we know of at least three, unless she says any further back. So I'm wondering if that had anything to do with an alliance coming up with the Gerudo, since the Gerudo are so strict on, you know, men can't come into our village, and, you know, that they're only used for reproductive purposes. So I'm wondering if having all these daughters and maybe the queen having more of the stand i don't know being more in charge maybe that happened because she's the one with the blood bloodline that somehow an alliance happened there because they may have become more trusting i don't know if that mm. makes any sense but that was just my thought since they're so strict about men and so biased towards them <laughs> so yep. against them you're basically saying because the gerudo uh you are loud son are strong <laughs> uh, sorry are <laughs> uh <laughs> Like, strong and, like, the belief of, like, you know, them being, like, female power, whatever. Yeah, that the fact that there were... matriarchs or something like that. Yeah, and then... You know, maybe there were a lot of kings that died young or something. You know, the opposite of what happened with Zelda's mom, you know, could have just as easily been, been our dad. There may have been some Hyrule that were ruled by only a queen, which always makes me think of Twilight Princess, because I'm like, where the king and queen at? If they ain't there, she the queen. <laughs> Yeah, she's not 21. yeah, that's true. I always I felt like it was weird that she wasn't just the queen. Yeah. 
Maybe yeah, she wasn't but, officially, officially. Yeah, they hadn't like finished the coronation. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Could go on forever making uh -huh. up all this stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, That's Tony. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure how entrenched with the lore of Zelda you are, but what are your thoughts? You know, I I was trying to think about how to word this necessarily like bursting any bubbles. Uh, because I think that I think that a lot of times we create lore from something that the developers weren't even thinking about. You know what I mean? And I think that the your two responses He's using were, the real world logic. Were, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that your two responses reasonable and probably make the most sense. Um, you know, if there were to be like a lore behind it, like when was this alliance created? Uh, I think the reason why they're not in Twilight Princess, which I actually don't recall them not being in Twilight Princess, but I haven't played that game in so long. They're not. Um, so. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I, they're probably just not in it because they're not in it. Yeah. They probably just weren't crucial to the story. They probably weren't necessary. Not every race of being is in every Zelda game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily. Well, it wasn't crucial, so it's not crucial. It gets cut. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, in what what we end up seeing is like, oh my god, like the alliance was broken after Ocarina of Time because of what Ganon did, you know. And then in Twilight Princess, the alliance isn't there, and like, oh my god, when did it? Re but in reality, and this is, um, you know, I think it's a good question. It's not a slight on the person who asked it. I just think that. I think we're looking for something that might not be there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. So you know, and it's you know, I I think that probably Jesse, what you said is the most reasonable. They probably had a fine working relationship, and you know, they just didn't weren't in Twilight Princess because they were doing something else. Yeah, you know. So uh, the thing that you said using the real world logic, which it's always fun looking at like different fan theories and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there was an interview that I read with. Miyamoto and Aonuma that kind of killed uh, a certain type of Zelda theory for me, which is mm. any geography based theories on like why is this location, yeah, like why mm -hmm. is Lake Hylia in this game at like the bottom left of the map, but yeah. in this game it's like the center right or whatever. Yeah, and there was an interview where they were asked about that, um, Aonuma, and he asked like if he was aware of like some of the fan theories and like what could have happened to make these places changes like another big one is Kakariko village sometimes it's near mm. death mountain and then sometimes it's kind of like mm. off on its own like in a link to the past it's like way like yeah. towards the bottom or to the center to the left and death mountains like towards the top and he's basically asked like you know why do the locations change and sometimes like Lake Hylia in Twilight Princess is like 10 times the size of the one in Ocarina of Time. And he basically said there is no lore, there's no theory, there's no in-game reason for this happening. Mm -hmm. The reason is we feel that if we were to put Lake Hylia in every single game, make it look exactly the same, have the same stuff there, the same landmarks, mm -hmm. it would be boring. Yeah, so exactly. the reason that Kekriko Village changes locations, the reason Hyrule Castles located in a different area, has nothing to do with lore or the theory. It's literally just because they thought it would be more fun if they made it that way, and that's the only reason. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. they don't think about any story reasons when they change everything. They're just thinking, well, we made it like this in this game. So in this game, what if we put an extra waterfall here just to make it a bit different? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that as fans, we like to look in depth, but there's not always depth to it. Yeah. Yeah. I right. see things like um, the Zelda Encyclopedia, the new book is out, actually tries to kind of make sense of the geography, ironically. <laughs> um, that has a couple of pages kind of dedicated to it, and you know, it shows it, you know, rotating Ocarina of Time's map where it lines up a little better with the Link to the Past map and things like that. Um, and it's interesting to look at it and be like, okay, yeah, so the landmarks line up more, even if north is suddenly, um, you know, 
northwest, but <laughs> or northeast. Um, but yeah, ultimately, like for me as well, like I, I've always told people when they're looking at Zelda theorists, theories and stuff like that, do not use geography to support your argument because that is not what the developers would use to support their argument. That they would mm. never uh, look into that. Um, but to humor the person who asked this question, yeah. I, you can I'm take us up. This an is. Answer. Yeah, this is uh, um, you taking us. So absolutely. Um, to to humor the question, though, I think still to give an answer. Um, in Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf does sort of pledge allegiance, as it were. Uh, Twilight Princess, you know, you see in the backstory, he's executed, whatnot. We don't really see the Gerudo. Kind of doesn't mean that they're not around. They might just be in a different part of the desert. A lot of people say that. Gerudo, either Spear Temple or Gerudo Fortress were turned into the Arbiter's Grounds, but there's no real confirmation or support one way or the other if that's actually the case, um, because they're just both locations that are in the desert. Uh, but we do see in Four Swords Adventure the Gerudo are there, and they are kind of peeved at that game's Ganondorf, who is a different Ganondorf, for kind of like going back behind their back and stuff. Um, and they seem very nomadic, so you know, my thought is either, <coughs> oh sorry, um, there was supposedly like a, a civil war. My thought has always been that either the Gerudo kind of migrated, became a bit more nomadic, and then ended up resettling, or that they, in Twilight Princess's case, kind of became absorbed into Hylian society in a way, and just kind of melded in with the rest of society for a time. Um, but again, like, there, there is, like, a 10,000 year gap between Breath of the Wild and every other game where politics could have changed so dramatically in that amount of time. Um, and there was a lot, a long era of peace thanks to the Sheikah technology, as stated in Breath of the Wild's backstory. Um, and with that peace is probably good politics. So, um, the, those tensions probably would have been forgotten by the time Breath of the Wild rolled around. Um, in fact, the only person to ever mention Ganondorf, uh, you know, origins as a Gerudo is Urbosa uh, as well. So um, it's possible that Hyrule doesn't, the Hy Hyrule society on large doesn't even know that that uh, sort of this big threat originated from the Gerudo originally at the time of Breath of the Wild. So again, thank you for attending my lecture. Please <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So that brings us to the very end of the podcast. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 33 people here. So thank oh, you to the 33 people that stuck through, through this two hours. Uh, Tony, I apologize if I took too much of your time. Uh, <laughs> it's all good, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So, Ilya, if people wanted to find more from you, where could they go? You have some new videos on your YouTube channel now. I do. I post every other Wednesday, so this Wednesday I will have a new video with a new intro, thanks to Daniel. Oh. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, you can just find me on YouTube as Elia Rose. Um, I call myself the Geek Apprentice, but it's really just look up Elia Rose. Twitter is Rose underscore Elia, and Instagram is Elia Rose underscore the Geek Apprentice. Or, no, no the, just Geek Apprentice. But that's where you can find me, or you can watch a bunch of Jesse's videos, and you might hear my voice every now and again. Yes. All right. Daniel. Hello. Who are you? What are you doing here? Hey, everybody. I'm Daniel. Okay. Uh, if you want to find me, uh, I'm here on this podcast every single week, except for like two weeks when I was like sick or dying or something. And <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at CaptBurgerson, that's C-A-P-T-B-U-R-G-E-R-S-O-N. I also have a website called Burgerson Media, uh, where I post all of the things that I work on ever. Cheeseburger um, reviews. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I post everything that I work on, including videos that I edit for people like Jesse who want to pay me to do that and you can do that as well and uh, royalty free music if you want to use that in your videos and if you do just tell me because I'd love to watch your video because I'm a I'm that kind of guy <laughs> <laughs> yes that's everything you need to know about me 
All right, and finally, our special guest. Once again, he's been on several videos in the past. I think we had one long interview a year or two ago, mm -hmm. and then we had uh, Daniel and I had him on a Zelda 64 discussion about uh, a Nintendo article before it was known as Ocarina of Time when it was still releasing in like 1997 or 96, one of the two. Uh, but it was eventually delayed and a bunch of changes happened. But it was really mm. cool to go through like Nintendo's official website to see what they were saying about it and promoting it and screenshots, videos and everything. Mm. So that was one of the funnest videos that I've ever done, to be honest. Uh, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I'm uh, glad I could help. <laughs> yeah, Tony, uh, he was like a very last minute. Daniel and I were looking at it and we were just like, well who else do we know that we could bring in to this? And I was like, well, Tony is a genius because this is no. like his entire no. channel is <laughs> like, I would, yeah. So like, yeah, basically we, we got Tony to come on. He was a lot more knowledgeable on it. He had some different ideas than I did. And Daniel had some different ideas than I did. So it was kind of good to debate and discuss on what some of the screenshots could have been. So mm -hmm. you can go back, watch that. It was split into two videos. You should be able to easily find it if you just like type in Game Over Jesse and Hard For Games in the search bar. You should be able to find any of those videos. Uh, but finally, Tony, thank you for giving your time to come on the podcast. Sure. Uh, you're one of Daniel's favorite YouTube channels. And it's not just oh, you, you have no. uh, your team <laughs> working as well. We, we've had you on. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't want to, like, make it seem like the rest of your team isn't important. It's just when I respond to like the Twitter page or something, you're sure. typically the one that replies. I'm, so, I'm generally the social media manager, if you will. But the team is definitely absolutely crucial because they they support the show and off screen and on screen, and they're just friends that I've had for years and years and years and years. But yeah, I really, you know, I had a ton of fun on the uh, Zelda episode that you had mentioned before. I had a ton of fun on the podcast and the mailbag and all that good stuff. So thank you for inviting me. You know, I like I said, it, it's just kind of cool to chat about Zelda and nerd out for a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good stuff. All right. Well, with that, uh, thank you once again, everybody that's watching. There's a few more people that join at the very end. So I apologize but the podcast has come to an end. Episode 40 of the Hylian Games Cast. Thank you already. all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, bye, everybody. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody.